Hello and welcome to the Aftcast Tenerife Afternoons podcast. I'm your host, Tim Dowd. Today's episode, we have an interview with Lee Alexander Davey, alias the Mac Master, talking about the vlog, all things Tenerife, steaks, chicken and seafood, cameras and editing suites, plus the latest on COVID-19 and the lockdown, and the weather Aftcast for last week. Enjoy the show, and don't forget to subscribe. I publish every Sunday night, ready for your Monday morning commute, or just start your week off with some sun. Here's the weather aftcast for Tenerife, week ending May 31st, 2020. Warm and hazy last week, La Gomera was not to be seen, and the temperatures in the sun exceeded 30 degrees C. Temperatures were in the mid-20s, not dropping below 21 at midnight. We ate every meal outside. You'll be able to return to these podcasts next year to find out what the weather was like in a particular week. Great for planning your holiday. COVID-19 update. 15 new cases were recorded on Tenerife last week, with unfortunately three deaths and 34 recoveries. We've been in the de-escalation phase two since May 18th, and some beaches are open again, with physical distancing in place. Inside areas are accessible at 50% capacity, and again, common sense is prevailing. Up to now, I've seen no reports of people abusing or ignoring the system. Our pool in the complex is being prepared for use with physical distancing and a rota. Details to follow next week. Spain is reportedly opening for foreign tourists on July the 1st. The safety measures are not yet finalised, but there are discussions between tourist ministers and other European countries to try and expedite visitors' entrance requirements. Find out next week how that plays out. The interview today is a new friend and international travel vlogger, the Mac Master himself. And that's up next. But first, thanks to all our sponsors, and especially Joanne, Mary, and Alan for your support. You can join them by buying us a coffee at our website, www.lwmst.com, and pressing the sponsor button. If you're having trouble reaching the website, you can now use www.timothydow.com. If you want me to review a cafe, bar, or restaurant, you can also sponsor the visit, or better still, Come over in person, when it's safe, and be part of the show. Without further delay and through the power of the internet, I will whisk you all back in time to last Friday and the Skype audio interview. Sorry for the lower quality of sound, and I just want to mention the opinions expressed here are our personal ones, and we are not connected with the official tourist industry in any way. Enjoy. Lee Alexander Davy, the Mac Master, YouTube travel vlogger since January 2018. You can reach him at youtube.com slash UK MacMaster. He has 4,300 subscribers. That's a thousand more in the last 30 days alone. 283 videos and has been viewed, wait for it, 1.75 million times. He's active on YouTube, Instagram and Twitter. He lives in Nottingham in the UK, but he also spent a lot of time in Hoboken, New Jersey in the USA. Welcome, Lee. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. You're coming in five by five. Where are you? I'm actually uh, in uh, sunny Leeds at the moment. In Leeds? In Leeds in the United Kingdom, but it's nice weather. I mean, it's not exactly Tenerife, but it's nice weather. Cool, cool. Okay, i got a few questions for you. Are you ready, or have you, or have you got something to say before we do? Uh, well, I'm just going to ask you what the weather's like, uh, Tim. What's the weather like over there? It's beautiful. It's a little bit hazy because we got a little bit of a Kalima uh, the last week, so we haven't seen La Gomera for a bit. And in the sun, it's got it's getting over 30 degrees. In the shade, it's probably in the mid 20s, and it hasn't dropped below 22 or 21 in the night for the past week. Oh. So that's quite good. And the pools right. are open. the pools are, is being open today. Oh, the, the, what, the swimming pools are open today. Excellent. Oh, that's great. Well, they've got that's it ready. They, I don't know. I don't know whether there's actually anybody in it, but they've got it ready with all the markings and the beds and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Superb. And one, one last question. Yes, sir. First, when can I come back? 
That's, that is the $350 million question. I did a test this morning. I went to Jet2 website and I booked a holiday in Laguna Park for a week for £485, uh, flying in from Manchester on July the 1st. So <laughs> whether that's true or not, I don't know. I didn't book it, but it was ready to take my money. Well, I'm sure they are. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they need the, my money to pay everybody back that they owe. Maybe. Well, we'll wait and see. I think I'll uh, I'll wait until July to be to be booking anything. But uh, anyway, you've got these questions, so fire away. I will. So my first question is: When and why did you start vlogging? Right. Well, I started vlogging about uh, I'd say about two and a half years ago. My first, very first vlog was in New York, over in Hoboken, where. Um, uh, my apartment, uh, well, my apartment was actually, I've, I've recently uh, sold it, um, but I, I spent most of my last 12 years over in the United States. My very first vlog was over there. And the reason I started vlogging was because I've been filming since I was seven years old. Our very first camera was a cine camera that my dad gave me. And I, then I got into video cameras. So I've been doing things since I was seven years old. Uh, and I started vlogging two and a half years ago because I watched a guy called Casey Neistat, which uh, is a, I'm a huge fan of, a uh, massive fan of his. Um, and I thought, I could do that. I've been filming since I was seven. I can, in fact, I can do better than that. So I started. Um, I was a bit nervous to start with, I have to admit. Uh, on my first vlog, if you look back, uh, you can tell that it's walking through the streets with a camera, talking to yourself. You feel slightly on edge a little bit you've done it I have. so you must know yes, yeah I did, so yeah. You... <laughs> and you do get some funny looks sometimes so two and a half years ago is the answer to that question and i started because uh, of casey neistat okay i used to follow casey as well and uh matty and uh peter mckinnon so i think we're all we're all on the same page here that's it and i still watch them although they've uh, well, Peter McKinnon is still going. Casey doesn't vlog as much anymore now. Uh, I think he's made his money. <laughs> I think he's made his money. He's got something like 10.5 million subscribers, so he can probably hop in and out. Plus, it, plus uh, I, don't, I don't want to ruin I don't know what questions you've got coming up. I don't want to ruin it, but it, you do get burnt out after a while if you keep trying to daily vlog, and I've been trying to do daily vlogs at the moment and push them out, and it does kind of burn you out after a while, to be honest. It does, it does. Okay, so let's stop the vlogging a bit and let's go to pre-vlog. And I know you've been filming since you were seven, but before the vlog, what did you actually do? In fact, I've been online and tried to sort of spy on you a little bit and I got some pictures that were taken at uh, some women's business conference while you were working for the Leicestershire Mercury, is that correct? That is correct, yes. I am a newspaper uh, background. I'm a graphic designer by trade. Um, so uh, I've been doing graphic design since 1987 when I was 17 years old and uh, so graphic designer, newspaper based and that is my business and I set up my own company called Digitize uh, which is still around um, but I kind of don't really do as much of that, I'm doing more vlogging now but so graphic designer and also the Leicester part of it um, the graphic design side went into marketing and, and corporate video. So I do a lot of corporate video still for the newspapers, for the Leicester Mercury, Birmingham Post, Nottingham Post and Derby Telegraph. And I'm contracted to them. Unfortunately, because of uh, the recent events, uh, I've lost all that contract this year. Not, not because I've done anything wrong, but because obviously they can't have the events. So hopefully I'll get them back next year. So I know you decided uh, this year to go full-time into vlogging. So what was your sort of decision process there? So could you tell us, like, what was going through your mind? Obviously, there was no COVID at the time. Because when I f first started doing graphic design, I had a, a, a real passion for it. Uh, um, I, was, I loved doing graphic design. If you look at all the thumbnails for my vlogs, they're all, they're all designed by me. Um, and I... I had a massive passion for graphic design. I loved it. I couldn't wait to get to work. I couldn't wait to, I used to be, I used to really enjoy seeing my work in newspapers when they came out or billboards. Um, and over the last two years, I absolutely, I hated it. I just, I, I could not abide doing graphic design. I, 
and I lost the love of it. And and again, going back to Casey Neistat, it was one of his vlogs, and he said, once you lose that passion for something, then there's no point in doing it anymore because you won't give it your all. So I didn't want to do graphic design for people and not give it my all. So I just I stopped. I, I gave all my clients away for graphic design. Um, and I, I've got the same passion that I had and that fire in my belly to make it work, to get more subscribers, to uh, to to make great content. And uh, I've got that same passion and desire as I had for graphic design. And that's what I like. It's not about the money this time because obviously YouTube doesn't make that much money. It's about I really enjoy it. I love the editing process. I love the filming. And I actually love meeting people along the way. I mean, I, I met you through um through YouTube mm -hmm. and people reach out to you, you meet a, a lot of nice people. Um, you do get a lot, you do get a lot of nasty comments as well, but you just ignore them uh, and move that on. That was my next nice question, comments. actually. <laughs> oh, right, well, we'll, we'll go on and carry on then. What's the next, what is the next question to do with that? Fire away, hit me with it. Okay, so going full time, you're obviously going to get more subscribers, and with more subscribers, you're going to get some trolls or you're going to get some people who are going to come and be negative. Uh, how do you deal with that? Do you know this is going to sound like a total advert for Casey Neistat, isn't it? But again, he always said ignore the haters so because they're just jealous basically they're jealous because at the end of the day there's no there's no face to them it could be some you know 10 year old kid just wanting to mess around with you or whatever so i just ignore them because at first it got to me and i thought oh, am I, i'm doing something wrong then you look at yourself and you think oh I'm, I'm too old for this or i'm not good enough for this i'm not good enough to do this and you listen to what they're saying but then for every one of those, or for every 10 of those or whatever, you still get some really nice comments. And, and even one of them nice comments outweighs the, the 10 negative ones that you get. So I just ignore them now because I just think they're jealous and it doesn't stop me. In fact, do you know what? In case anybody, any trolls are listening to your podcast, I'd like to thank them anyway because every one of their comments – ranks me higher on youtube because it's they're interacting with it so thanks very much keep, keep coming <laughs> so there's the positive in the negativity there for you there's the positive in the negative so yeah so i just i just ignore them exactly in fact you're probably not a professional if you don't have a troll right I, exactly if if you've got no trolls then you haven't got enough subscribers so and and they are thankfully increasing like you say is it over a thousand in the last month or something i think so i haven't counted exactly and i just want to take this opportunity to thank you as well because since you featured me on your channel last year and again this year uh, my channel's actually boomed a little bit so uh, that's an allowing me to do this as well now so thank you very much for that next question okay why tenerife why tenerife right well um i have always liked tenerife i've always loved tenerife the first time I went was in the 1990s with my next door neighbors and their son, who I was friends with. Uh, and then I went uh, again uh, in the 90s and in 2000s with my um, first children, my oldest children. Um, and then again, I started going with um, uh, my girlfriend and um, my, my, my daughter, now my youngest daughter. And uh, I said to Sarah, my girlfriend, I said, I've got to, um, I want to just nip out and do a vlog. So I did a, a vlog and it got a few views and, uh, and I started doing a few more because it's, it's nice to vlog out there because it's so, I find it scenic. There's so much, to, so much interest uh, uh, out there to vlog. Um, and then it started getting lots and lots of views and I thought, wow, this is going really well. I must have hit on something here. And then, and I enjoyed it. Uh, you've got the sunshine, you've got the sea, and, and it's a great place to vlog. You know, it's a great job to have, isn't it, if you can film uh, about um, a place like Tenerife. It is. And then I went back to New York, and I did another vlog, and I'd got, I'd got 130,000 views or something like that, or 110, I can't remember what it is, so over 100,000 views on this one video from Tenerife. And I thought, oh, wow, I'm doing all right now. So I, did one in, <laughs> I went over to, back to New York, and I did one there, and I think it got about... 1200 i thought oh, it's not the same audience and you get people saying uh, oh you know do more tenerife ones so i did some more um i mean I, I will say um it's not just tenerife that i vlog um but um 
uh, at the moment I'm trying to do Tenerife and then I'll do Lanzarote. I'm going to do the other islands and I am going to do other places as well. But I do love Tenerife. I always have loved Tenerife and people are enjoying it at the moment. Interesting you should say why do I vlog Tenerife though? Because a guy put on my channel uh, yesterday, it wasn't a troll, but he said, your uh, channel's getting a little bit like Groundhog Day. Why don't you do somewhere else other than Tenerife? And I said, well, as soon as the lockdown's over, I, I will. I mean, I did Gran Canaria. Yeah, I saw that one. And you're going to, you're going to be doing Lanzarote, you say, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to do Lanzarote. I'm going to do Fuerteventura. Um, I'm going to do all the islands, and then I'm going to travel. And then I'm going to do uh, mainland Spain as well. So I've got lots in the pipeline. Vegas was supposed to happen this year. Um, but... Um, it's just kind of stalled me a little bit um, because obviously we can't fly anywhere at the moment. So, uh, but as soon as we can. So going back to your first visit in Tenerife, um, you said you went over with family and friends as a teenager. I went over, I think I was, uh, yes, I think I was about, I must be about 17, 18. And uh, we went over with, I went over with my, like I say, my next door neighbour and my their son, who was my best mate at the time. And uh, fell in love with it then. It was absolutely great. I loved it. Um, Where did you uh, stay? Right. Oh, blimey. Now you're asking. Uh, it was in a hotel near, uh, is there a hotel called La Pinta? Yeah. Uh, near Amanda's. Amanda's was around the corner from Amanda's. I can't remember the name of the hotel. It was around the corner from Amanda's. Yeah, La Pinta, right, on, right by the Puerto Colón there, on yeah. Playa La Pinta. Yeah, that was the first place that I stayed, and uh, I loved it. So I've been back, back so many times, I can't remember now. It's uh, And I th the people are lovely. I, I, I've never met a, a bad person there. They're all Everyone's so friendly. So now we're going up to the recommendations. So I'm going to ask you for, let's say, four recommendations. One is where would you go for the best steak, and if you could be as quick as possible on this. Oh, the best steak. Uh, right, okay, where would I go for the best steak? Oh, um, well, I did a video uh, on uh, a steak, and I, I can't, was it La Brasserie? It was a great steak, but I waited ages for it. And I have to say, it was a really, really nice steak. I think it was called La Brasserie. If you're prepared to wait, then that is a great steak because you've got a really nice barbecue taste to it. And I really enjoyed it. And I would say, I would say there, La Brasserie, I really enjoyed it. That's down by Fania Bay, right? It is, yes, it is. Okay, and do you eat the Canarian chicken? And if you do, where do you go for that? I, do you know, I haven't had the Canarian chicken yet, uh, so I wouldn't be able to answer that one. But maybe you, well, you could tell. Where is the best place? Vlog on it because I've never had it. Okay, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Next time you come over, we'll go out there together and we'll do the vlog together. It's called the Oasis, and uh, I'll treat you to that one, and then you treat me to the one up the hill, which is more expensive. How's that? You're on. That's the deal. That's a good deal. You got it. You got it. Okay, that's the chicken. Okay, do you eat seafood, and where do you go for that? Um, seafood, there is a place which is about two or three doors down from La Brasserie. Um, and again, I can't remember the name of it, but it's, it's on one of my vlogs, and the lady pulls me in, mm -hmm. uh, and all they're all the fishes in all the tanks and um you choose the crab or whatever you want or the lobster mm -hmm. uh whichever you want and it's 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 that one that's my favorite place and i can't remember the name of it but i've only been i've been a couple of times i'll have a look on the on google maps and i'll stick it in the uh i'll stick it in the comment section and where do you go i i noticed on your last vlog you said that you're missing the frosty beers so where do you go for your frosty beer <laughs> well, my frosty beers, I actually walk a long way for a frosty beer because it, obviously everybody thinks I'm tight. Um, I go to. Uh, <laughs> I saw that vlog. I go. To, I had to fast forward. I was, get, I was getting parched. I had to fast forward. <laughs> I deserved it to the end. By you, the end. you did. You did. Um, <laughs> Um, I'd go I, again. There's a place in Los Cristianos, but my favourite bar where they do do a, um, a frosty pint is the uh, tr the Traveller's Rest. I like the Traveller's Rest, which is opposite uh, the Sol and Leonardo's as well, and they do a, a frosty beer in the Traveller's Rest. There, I like it there. Oh, I drove I drove past that and sent you the footage where it was all empty. You did, you did. I got that footage. It's uh, like a ghost town, yeah, it was. Um, but. 
but that's my favourite place. And I'll tell you why I like that place. People say, oh, what are you sitting inside for? But I, I like to sit at the bar on an evening in the uh, in the Traveller's Rest. Uh, it's a bit like my my local bar in the States. I'd just sit there at the bar, watch the TV, have my drinks. They, they did look at me a little gone out, though, because I just kept leaving my money on the on the bar like you do in the States, and they take the money when they want. They didn't understand what I was doing. But that's my favourite bar anyway, Traveller's Rest. Okay, next question. Uh, this is a hard one, so take your time. The most non-touristy thing that you've done in Tenerife? Oh, my word. The most non-touristy thing. Yeah. Um, I would say uh, <laughs> getting thrown around in the back of a transit van, in my mate's transit van who lives over there, uh, just going for a pint with him on an evening. And he lives there. And we, we couldn't... Um, Sounds a bit crazy, this, but there was no room in the uh, in the front because him and his mate was there. So the most non-touristy thing I've done is go for a pint in a red hot van in the back, and he's driving. He's got a, a, a radio transmitter thing saying you're all right in the back, and I'm getting thrown around in the back of this removals van in the back, and that's the most probably non-touristy thing that I've done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't it's expecting. You... I wasn't expecting that, but uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Next question: the one thing you do or get in Tenerife that you wish you could get at home. Ooh, the one thing that. I... All right. Um, I would say, have I got a minute to think about this? Sure, sure. Can... And can it be only one thing? Well, it, it it's got to be one thing because that's the question. But if you got two things, I'll take them. Okay. Right. Well, I would say uh, I'm going to get slated here early on, but I'd say Costa Coffee, uh, a cup of Costa Coffee, because I, I've, I've got a bit of a thing about that. I know you can get it over there, but it's not the same. Uh, and that's a, a, <laughs> a McChicken sandwich, because it's not the same. Same in America. Oh, you got the, you, you answered the question backwards. I was asking, what do we have in Tenerife that you'd like to take back to the UK? Oh, this is cool. No, I, I, then that's even an even better question. What do you what do you want to bring with you? What what's missing here? That was good. Oh right, okay. What do you have in Tenerife that I'd like to have, that I'd like to have in Britain? <laughs> Would be I'm not going to say the obvious like weather because you can't take that back. Um, but I would say seafood mm -hmm. uh, because great seafood over there. Uh, and are you ready for this? Go on. I, I said Costa Coffee bringing taking over there. Mm -hmm. However. Barraquito. Barraquito, 43. That's the uh, liqueur that goes in it, right? 43. Yes. Cool. Yeah, I'd like to bring I, I haven't seen it over here, and, and I, I could sit and drink them all day. All right. So, yeah, yeah so I would love to bring that back. Okay. Uh, I've got three more questions. Uh, one is basically technical. What do you film with? Right. Well, now we get into the interesting parts where I'm, where I can answer this. I have a lot of equipment, uh, as as you do, and um, I don't want to get too technical because people, a lot of people probably won't be interested. But I have a uh, a Lumix GH5. I have a, a Sony A7 III with all different lenses, and I also have two dedicated video cameras. Um, and I, I use them for corporate video, and I started using them for vlogging. And um, Samsung gave me a, although I'm an Apple user, obviously, mm -hmm. I'm an Apple user. Um, Samsung gave me a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, which I've been like for, put it on a, a, a Joby. So I use a, I use a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus mobile phone to vlog with. And the reason being, because it's lighter, you still get great shots. Um, I, I mix my iPhone into that a lot now, my iPhone 11 Pro Max, mm -hmm. but mainly a mobile phone to vlog on because you still get the results. And the main reason is you get less hassle from people. Again, you'll know this mm -hmm. if you haven't got a massive great camera and a uh, you know a cab with you or whatever. So I get less hassle. So yeah. I, and I just love it. You need the bigger rigs for the corporate stuff because that gives brings you more money in, right? Well, yeah. And sure, if I turned up to a to a client with a, with a with a mobile phone attached to a stick, it probably. Although I could get the footage just as good. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you've got to give them what they want. So I use uh, two mobile phones: Samsung Galaxy and an iPhone. Uh, is your answer? 
And very quickly for us techno files out here, um, what uh, NLE editor do you use? I use uh, Final Cut Pro on the Mac. Mm -hmm. um, and I know a lot of people use Adobe Premiere. I, I don't, so I use Final Cut Pro. Do you have any advice for people who want to start a vlog? I do. Uh, just get get up. Start a vlog, don't buy any expensive equipment, pick up your mobile phone, because that's what I use, and just go out, make sure you shoot it landscape. <laughs> it winds me up when people shoot stuff in portrait. Pick up your phone and just go out and do it and uh, upload your video and, then, and above all, enjoy it. Just enjoy it and get on and do it. And that's my advice. Just and make a good And also make a good story out of it because it's not your equipment. It's about the story. Because if you if you could have the world, you could have the world's greatest equipment. But if you're telling a terrible story, nobody's going to want to watch it. That is great advice. That is fantastic advice. So, when's your next visit planned? My, <laughs> well, I was I was hoping you'd be able to tell me that one. As soon <laughs> as I can, as soon as I can get on a plane, um, I will come over and I'll do some uh, I'll do some videos. Um, and uh, it, it's been a bit difficult with the uh, current situation mm -hmm. uh, but people like yourself who's who's supplied footage to me and, and done video conferences and I've, I've filmed them um, it's been a massive help uh, to keep the channel alive but I will be coming back hopefully in July mm -hmm. if I can uh, people have said to me oh you know you might be able to fly over in July but you'll have to do a two weeks quarantine back in the UK well that's fine because I I won't be going out for two weeks. I'll be editing. So, yeah. So hopefully July, as soon as I can. As soon as I can get a flight there, I will be on it. Okie dokie. Lee Alexander Davy, alias the Mac Master, thank you very much for coming today. And thanks very much for answering the questions so vividly and with gusto, as they say. Uh, you can get hold of him at youtube.com slash the UK Mac Master or UK Mac Master. Also active on Instagram and Twitter. And until the next time, Lee, thanks very much. Thank you, Tim. Thank you very much. Goodbye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks to Lee for a wonderful interview. And don't forget, you can go and visit him at YouTube channel at youtube.com slash UK MacMaster. Well, thanks for tuning in. We publish every Sunday night, so subscribe to be notified. We have a Facebook page called Living With MS in Tenerife and can be reached by searching for at LWMST. Plus we have a YouTube channel at youtube.com slash LWMST and a website at timothydow.com. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.